Hey guys, it's Diabetic Girl. I figured today I would do some talking about some of my favorite things. Um, and one of those things is advocacy. So basically, I absolutely adore advocating and I love doing everything I do uh, to make the world a better place. Sometimes it can be really hard to do, obviously. And right now, with everything going on, I feel like Talking about my advocacy story is probably one of the smartest things I can do. Um, just because I've been through a real whirlwind of stuff over the past couple of weeks. And I am trying to get my life back and sort of feel like myself again. And advocating is one of those things. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my advocation story. And then give you tools and steps to become your very own advocate. <sighs> so basically, my advocation story started when I was about seven or eight, and I was down at camp all the time, and, you know, I just sort of fell, it fell into place. I was just advocating for other people, basically, like, helping them learn how to do everything, and throughout, like, doing that for myself, I didn't realize, like, how good I was doing, and, like, that I was actually really enjoying myself until I started working there for like the summer and you know it was a couple of summers ago that this channel like came to be and I wasn't really sure how I felt about doing a channel fully dedicated to my life with diabetes. I thought that for a while it was just going to be snippets and it ended up not being that at all. Um, it was completely comedy which as you guys can probably tell that's 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 my sh my my niche comedy, um, and so basically it went from comedy to me starting to talk about my diabetes life, um, and one of the probably saddest things for me, and I vlogged about it when it happened about two years ago, was when I couldn't become an official like advocate, um, so that you know when I was blogging about it, I could actually like use that I was an advocate. Um, and that was really, really hurtful. But then my senior year of high school, I became an ADA officiated or official diabetes advocate, uh, which is something I hold very close to my heart these days uh, more than anything because I feel like with everything going on, that, that has been one thing that has always remained constant in my life and it makes me really happy. Um, so before I like dive into the video, like dive, dive in, um, so for a lot of you wondering how I started advocating so young, my mom and I used to go down to the Barton Center for Diabetes Education and she would do like the cooking and stuff in the kitchen because it was the only way we could afford to send me to camp. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not from like the most wealthy of families, um, but I still love my family more than anything. They have been so supportive with everything I do and my mom has been like beyond amazing. So I'll probably share this on Facebook so she can see it. But thank you, Mom, for everything you've done for me when it comes to advocating and teaching me how to be the very best person that I could be. Um, my mom has been, like, my biggest cheerleader, my support system, my caretaker, my mom, my doctor, and, of course, my biggest advocate. So I am beyond thankful for everything that my mother has done for me um, and has basically, like, led up to me doing what I love doing, which is advocation. Um, so my advocation, as I said, started when I was, you know, about seven or eight, when I, my mom was working, like, in the kitchen so that I could go to camp during the summer, and then, like, so basically what would happen would be, like, there would be a family who would come in who needed extra help learning about diabetes, and since I didn't really have a family because my mom was in the kitchen all the time, I would become basically their on-site, extra-hand advocate, and I loved doing that so, so much. Um, it was just absolutely wonderful. So I would do that for them, and it was, it, it was, like, really fun for me because it was fun to watch them learn stuff, and, like, that I was teaching them. That meant, a, a, like, a, a whole lot, a whole, whole, whole lot to me when I was younger, and it still means a lot to me now that I was able to make an impact in someone's life. And as I got older, I kind of, I, didn't, I don't want to say I frayed away from diabetes advocation, but I wasn't doing it as often as I 
had when I was younger because I, while I had the tools at my disposal, I, it was really more a matter of like, did they need someone who was, you know, 15, teaching this family how to do that, and it, you, you know, it just, it didn't make any sense. So, basically, at that point in time, I started working in the kitchen with my mom at camp, and I, as I said, that was like one of, it's always been one of my favorite things, um, and around the same time as I was doing that, I was filling out applications to work at the camp as a staff member, and I was very blessed to be on the Barton Day Camp team for about four years. Um, it, it just, it made my summer so, so amazing, like every single year. And, you know, I look back on it so thankful that I got to be a part of something so amazing and that I got to pay it forward, you know, basically like my entire life. Uh, I'm so thankful for that, obviously. And a lot of the time, it, you know, it was teaching campers how to embrace their diabetes and how to be happy with themselves. And sometimes it felt really weird because I didn't know if I was happy with my diabetes sometimes. So I would just kind of, you know, try to help them get through what they needed to get through. And sometimes I, I learned a lot about myself from helping them. I don't know why this piece of hair is being a butt right now. Just want to film a video. So I would like learn a lot about myself through doing stuff for them. And to me, that felt really rewarding. Now, one of the most rewarding moments of my life that I can remember from doing all the advocacy is when I worked at camp the summer of, I think it was, it was definitely 2012 or 2013. I want to say it was 2013. Yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, okay. So, the summer of 2013, I had a couple of campers find me on YouTube, and they told me I should start, like, doing stuff with diabetes. And, you know, I hadn't really put much thought into it, just because, why would I do that? So, but, you know, these campers really pushed me to be the very best I could be at all times. And I had decided that, you know, I was going into my senior year of high school, and, you know, I had done, like, a few videos here and there about my life with diabetes, but I decided I want to, like, kick it up a notch and, like, bring you guys, like, BD's rants, which is basically what this is, and really put what I knew on the table for my campers. And I started more, like, religiously um, talking about my diabetes on YouTube, and that led me to do Diabetic Girl Studio Sessions. Uh, where I could do all the same things, but give it a little bit more time and not feel as rushed and have really quite amazing guests. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen my past two videos, um, unfortunately filming has come to an end on Diabetic Girl Studio Sessions, but I wanted to thank you guys for all the support you've given me throughout the years and for, you know, really, really staying with me and Realizing that while I have some crazy ideas and I am ridiculous that sometimes I can make the best of every situation and thank you guys for supporting me while I did my show and thank you guys for welcoming me back with open arms when I dropped my show and I came back. So basically my advocacy story is about 10, 11 years long and Every single day that I advocate and I try to do something right, it makes me feel so, like, wonderful because I'm doing something good, basically. Now, a lot of people ask me why I choose to do advocation um, in kind of weird platforms, if you think about it. And for me, I really, really love film and I really, really love advocating so, why not bring them together in one sort of route and do them together? And that is how this channel was born. That is how Diabetic Girl Studio Sessions became a thing. Um, was bringing my passions to life, basically. Now, for those of you sitting at home going, Okay, we get it. You're an advocate. What can I do? Well, plain and simple. Make sure that you educate yourself first because you don't want to go into anything uneducated. Now, 
if you want to be an advocate, I tend to find being an open book is a very useful thing. I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but if you're trying to advocate about something and you shut people out and you, like, shut the world out, you're not going to get very far. So make sure that you're willing to answer questions and that you are an open book for the world because usually the more open you are, the better things are. And I find that, you know, your excitement to want to educate others and to help them understand really helps. Trust me, I think that my advocacy would have failed years ago if I didn't try to do it with a smile every single day. And I know that sometimes that can be really hard because people don't understand or they believe what they want to believe. And trust me, that is by far the worst thing someone can do to you. I speak from so much experience. But I've also learned that people are going to believe what they want to believe no matter what. And if you can set the record straight, congratulations. Then, you know, it, it feels so, so amazing, I promise. And, you know, knowing that you get to help other people and, like, that you get to see, like, the difference you're making, now that, that is rewarding. Let me talk to you about rewarding. When you can see the difference that you're making in however you're doing it, it feels so wonderful for it to all come back to you. And that is, I think, one of the reasons why I do advocate so, so heavily. Because I want everyone to have a fair chance at what they are doing. Um, and then my final thing with advocacy is, it's not something you can just, like, do for a couple of days and, like, be done with it. No. Advocacy takes the, basically forever and it is a 24-7 job because you never know when someone's going to ask the questions. So just be prepared and know it is going to be 24-7, but have fun with it. I love advocating more than anything I have ever done. So once again, thank you guys all for being an amazing set of ears. And I will see you all later. And until then, keep calm and advocate on. Bye, guys.